Hi, my name's uh, Rob Judson and I'm a GP doctor near Bristol and I'm also a um, foraging instructor for Wild Food UK. I got into foraging a slightly unusual route in some ways in that I was actually doing some work with my wife who's also a doctor. We had a year where part of our job was to teach medical students and as part of that we got to run this fun project where we ran our own sort of wilderness expedition medicine course for them. So we took a bunch of students to Exmoor taught them about diseases in different hostile environments and you know the sorts of ways you can treat those things and as part of that we then got to go with them on a kind of more official course up in the Lake District and the guy running the course was great and he um, as a bit of a time filler he was like oh let's do a wild food walk and um, he just bent down and picked up this plant that was growing in the spruce woodland that we were in we all tasted it and it was this beautiful kind of zingy lemony flavor and I now know that plant is wood sorrel but from that moment I was just absolutely hooked I was like wow this is amazing all this sea of nameless plants that I just sort of lumped together as kind of weeds or whatever now took on meaning and like oh that one's really delicious that one's poisonous so don't eat that one and it just began a real obsessive interest really I guess for me why I find it so interesting I think probably first and foremost is it's just a treasure hunt. Whenever you go out walking now, it's like just seeing what's growing, seeing what mushrooms are there, what plants are there, and just really learning to appreciate that and kind of honing my senses of observation, really. And I guess as part of that as well, there's just that real connection to nature, that connection that actually for thousands of years we have humans have had and actually has been lost more recently. A connection between the mushroom organisms and they have these symbiotic relationships with plants. And so you if you know your trees, you know where to look for the best mushrooms and all that sort of stuff. You know, the more you love something, the more you want to look after it. And so the sort of sustainability of these things is really something that has grown on me and something that I'm passionate about. Why that then turned into becoming a foraging instructor is still a bit of a mystery to me, really. I was quite happy with it as a obsessive hobby. And then, um, I started going on a couple of courses with Wild Food UK and they said they were looking to recruit new instructors. So I just sort of thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So I um, applied for a job while my wife was out of work and she came home and I was like, yeah, so I've applied to be a foraging instructor. And she was like, but you're a doctor. I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do both. And she was like, all right. So I um, haven't looked back. Absolutely love it. And I think the two are very helpful for one another in some ways. And I think there's undoubtedly loads of physical and mental health benefits to foraging, which I think I'm increasingly wanting to promote to people. But also uh, I think it really helps sustain me as a GP to be doing the foraging thing because it's a pretty tough job doing 10 minute appointments for any number of different problems and getting out of the room and being quiet or going with a friend and having a nice chat whilst you're sort of out hunting for food is is awesome. I love it. But I do think that foraging is for everyone. I think if everyone knew about, let's say, just two plants, and I would pick stinging nettles and another plant called common hogweed, which gives you a couple of great vegetables, those plants are so sustainable. You know, you cut them down, they're constantly strimmed in all the hedgerows across the country, and cut them down, and up they spring with the fresh new growth again, which is the bit that you want as a forager. So I there's basically free vegetables out there for everybody. Seasonally grown, no plastic, no food miles, just out on a walk. It's a bit like gardening in a way. Both of those things are connecting with the land, watching things grow, learning to love and identify and see changes in the seasons and stuff like that. But I suppose the difference with foraging is the hard work is done for you. These things are growing in the places that they want to grow. Uh, whereas gardening is a bit more hard work. I like gardening as well, and I'm growing my own vegetables and stuff to sort of supplement. It does feel a bit more like you're making an effort to make this thing grow in a place that it wouldn't necessarily choose to. And you've got to stave off the various bugs by picking slugs off your lettuces and stuff. Whereas foraging is just go out and enjoy. And the knowledge, I suppose, is the hard work. But if you love learning about it, then that's, that's not even a hard thing. Yeah, I'm just wondering what one of my favourite days would be foraging. I think probably it would be the day I went with uh, my mate Tom. We went to a beautiful old oak woodland near Bristol on a soggy autumn day. And Tom didn't know a lot about foraging. I was just kind of dragging him along and just blabbering on as I like to about foraging. And it was just an awesome day. The mushrooms were just oozing out of the ground. It was the day I found my first porcini mushroom, or to use the English name, a penny bun. 
because it looks like a sort of golden crusty loaf, the sort of top bit of it, like they used to sell in bakeries for a penny apparently. And loads of other bolit mushrooms, a bolit mushroom basically is a mushroom with a stem growing out of the ground with a sort of spongy underside. You know how in shop-bought mushrooms in general they have gills on the underside of the cap? The bolits are a big other group of mushrooms that have a sort of sponge-like substance underneath. So yeah, we found loads of bolites, including the, the penny bun. Found a beefsteak fungus for the first time and basically took it all home and made a delicious kind of creamy mushroom pasta for dinner that night. And yeah, fantastic time with my mate. Fantastic time finding loads of new stuff for the first time, which is so exciting. That probably illustrates in some ways some of the mental health benefits of foraging. There's some research done by... Uh, the new economics foundation called the five ways to well-being which has been used by loads of nhs mental health trusts by the mental health charity mind and basically this has got five things that can help improve your well-being and i realized that on a good day i could do all five of these when i go foraging so be active while you're going for a walk take notice you're sort of opening your senses up you're looking around you keep learning well i'm always learning when i'm out foraging if there's a plant i don't know i want to know what that plant is Give, you know, obviously you're providing someone with, with food, with a meal, you're undoubtedly giving and connect with people. And um, obviously I was out with my mate Tom that day. We had a great chat and a good life catch up doing that. I think there's also just something special about doing a shared activity that you both enjoy that helps connect you with people that might be easier than just sort of sitting down and having a chat. I guess it is one of those things though where with foraging, I always want to get people excited about it, but I always say, you know, just do it safely. It's not an extreme sport. It's the sort of thing where you want to be enjoying this for years. It's a way to supplement your diet, to get tasty food, to kind of reconnect with nature. But it's not worth saying, oh, this could be a poisonous one. Should I, uh, should I give it a go? So start off with stuff that don't have poisonous lookalikes. So first mushroom me and my wife foraged when I was getting into this was called the hedgehog fungus, which instead of sponge on the underside or gills on the underside of the cap of the mushroom it has these little spines um, so it's a really safe one to start with and a delicious mushroom as well there's an old foraging saying that sort of backs that up really which is there are old foragers and there are bold foragers but there are no old bold foragers so yeah i hope you get out foraging and doing it sustainably because this planet's something that we we share in as opposed to an endless pool of resources to be tapped because the resources can dry up sadly thanks